Anyway, I was walking this morning and um, the Lord just showed me the trees in our neighborhood and they were growing. You know how we would like to keep our gardens neat and we would like to trim them? But apparently in God's economy and His system, nature just grows by itself. And if you remember the scripture where it says that um, we water, we till the garden, but God gives the growth. He, you know, what, what, what sort of stuff, what, what are the things that a plant needs? Plant needs what? Water, we can water. Yes, what else? Plant food. Soil, and we can probably fertilize the soil. But that's about as much as we can do. Whatever nutrients are there is just about it. What else? Sunshine. Sunlight, which we have, we can't do anything about that. If there's no sun, you know, we can probably put a sun lamp on it. That's about it. Now what else do we need for plants to grow? Fertilizer. Oh, besides fertilizer, because we did that. Oxygen. Air. Air. Right, oxygen. What can we do about oxygen? We can't do anything about the sun, we can't do anything about the oxygen, we can't do much about the soil except for some fertilizer. But the best that we can do is water the plants, correct? Mm -hmm. Our children need the water. Now, if we try to fix the plants so it looks a certain way, there's a term that the Japanese uh, used to call plants that have been trimmed or fixed in a certain way, it's called bonsai. And they, they're very small, you know, you cut the tap root so it doesn't grow that much. Um, our children need nurture, our children need care, our children need love more than anything else. It's not the restrictions that we put on them that makes them grow, it's the love and nurture and care that we pour out of them that makes them grow and allow them to be able to face the world. I'm sure you don't want your plants to stay in inside your house. You know, if you want it to really grow, grow, like you put them outside. Let the sunlight and the air nurture that plant and then you water them. Um, now I was born number eight. My, in my family of eight, I'm the youngest. And you know what happens to the youngest, right? How many of you here are the youngest in your family? Ah, oh, me, I'm, I'm, I'm not the only one. <laughs> and, and I'm sure the older brothers and the older sisters, they kind of think that the youngest ones, they're all spoiled brats, right? That's what my brother and my sister thought about me. They thought I was a spoiled brat. Um, and I got pinched a lot for doing things that I, a little kid normally does. So we, we, I was subjected to abuse, physical abuse, right? Glenn seems to know. Were you the abuser or the abused? Oh, give him the business. <laughs> okay, so were you the victim? Uh, no, you were the abuser, right? <laughs> This, this is an exciting topic because when we go to Exodus chapter 13 verse 2 and this is part of the Old Covenant Law verse 2 it says consecrate to me every firstborn male firstborn right the first offspring of every womb among the Israelites belongs to me this is God speaking whether human or animal and so he wants the firstborn. And I kind of think that when I read this, the grace of God, the blessing of God goes to the firstborn. And I happen to be the last one. So, man, this is, I'm not in the right church. <laughs> They're teaching something that's against me. But I read through the scriptures and you find the first children born Cain and Abel. Who's the firstborn? My best friend. Cain, right? He's supposed to have the blessing of God. Well, what happened? 
from Cain and Abel were born, and, and then they became uh, a farmer and a, was he a hunter? Right, Tom? Yes. Tom is here, you can always check on him. <laughs> or check with him. God accepts whose sacrifice? The younger. The younger one. And I scratch my head and say, right. Well, I thought his blessing was on the firstborn. But why is he accepting the younger one? Cain's sacrifice was not accepted. Abel's sacrifice was accepted. Move on, Genesis. Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael was firstborn, right? To another mother. Right? So they were half brothers. Isaac was the younger one. And which one did God accept? Isaac. Isaac, the son of the promise. Move on. Esau and Jacob. Who's the firstborn? Esau. Esau, you answer that. <laughs> Esau and Jacob. Jacob is the younger one. And which one received the blessing? Jacob. What's up with this, right? Um, Joseph and his older brothers. Joseph is the youngest one. He was born to the uh, the woman that Jacob really worked for. See, Jacob, um, his name means the planter. He did something to get his blessing from his father. And in return, this is what happened. This is what people call karma. He goes and, and works for Laban. He wanted Leah, uh, he, he wanted Rachel. But he gets Leah instead. Right? Seven years. And then he gets Leah. And then he says, no, that's not the girl that I work for. I wanted Rachel. So Laban has a treaty with them or uh, an agreement with them. You work for me for another seven years and I'll give you the second, my younger daughter. And so God's favor again falls on the younger one. And his children, Joseph, Joseph was born to who? Which wife? Uh, huh? Which one? Rachel, that's right. Joseph was born to Rachel. And all the older brothers disliked him because he was the spoiled brat. He got the, what kind of coat? A coat of many colors. And so, that's, you know what happened to him? They sold him off to slavery and they made it look like he got killed by a, 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 a wild animal. <coughs> Joseph had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Who's the oldest? The older of two. Manasseh. Manasseh, right. And so what Jacob did when he, when, when J, what Joseph did when Jacob was about to bless the two kids, he put Manasseh on Jacob's right hand and then Ephraim on the left hand. He was expecting Jacob to go like this and put his right hand blessing upon the older one. But guess what Jacob did? He crossed his arms and put the blessing on the younger one. David was the youngest of the family. And when Samuel came to anoint the next king, he was thinking that the anointing was going to go to the, one of the older brothers. And guess what? What did God say? Oh, you anoint the youngest one, David. Who was the youngest of the apostles? John. So apostles, John. That's right. He was the youngest one. And you know what? At Christ's death on the cross, he told Mary, now this is your son. You're losing me, but here is your son. And he made sure that John was the one who would take care of Mary. Amazing. That even though God said in the old covenant that blessing belongs, twofold blessing belongs to the firstborn. In practice, he kept on blessing the youngest one. 
I'm sharing this with you because for, this is supposed to be a, a youth-oriented service. This is our first attempt. And we're doing this because we want to make sure that the kids, the younger ones, the young adults, 13 to 29, they get a message that uplifts them, that encourages them, that allows them to realize their calling. What is your calling? See, you may be the youngest or one of the younger ones, you may be part of the youth in this congregation, but God, what does God think of you? See, you may not, sometimes, I was a young person too in the Catholic Church. I grew up in the Catholic Church and I didn't feel like I was really part of the church. It was, well, I didn't like Mass. First of all, I didn't understand what they were saying because they were saying it in Latin. They were speaking in tongues in the Catholic Church. <laughs> and then I thought, the music didn't make any sense to me. Why do we have to do all these rituals? Kneel down, stand up, sit down, kneel down, stand up, kneel down, stand up. And I listened to this guy for like an hour. You know, all these rituals just didn't make any sense to me. Saturday Mass. And I learned that they played the guitar in, the, in this Saturday Mass. Seven, Saturday Night Mass Mass. I, I don't want to go there. So I was, in, I was in my high school days and so I thought I'd go there by myself. And I figured, yeah, this is better than the Sunday morning Mass. You know, not only did we have a guitar, they played some of the songs were pretty, pretty much better, and plus all the all the teenage girls were there, there too. <laughs> you didn't think I would say that. <laughs> so Luke chapter two, verses twenty-two to twenty-four. We look at Jesus and we see when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And guess what? As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. Verse 24. And to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons were sacrificed. Jesus was first born. See, all that, all those things in the, the old covenant, they pointed to Jesus Christ. He's the first born. But you know what? God's blessing and love flows to Jesus Christ to the young people. All of us. We're younger compared to Jesus Christ. You look at your neighbor and say, you are really younger. You are really young. You're younger than Jesus Christ. See, that's the point. We're all younger than Jesus Christ. He's the firstborn. He's our elder brother. And he is the one that makes us acceptable to Jesus Christ. But here's the point. I'd like to encourage the younger ones, the youth in our congregation. I, I believe that we all should begin to encourage them rather than shout at them, rather than, you know, train them, contain them. They're not going to grow by us shouting at them. They're going to grow by us loving them, caring for them, nurturing them. Amen? That's how I grew up. See, my oldest bro my older brother, he got he got all the spanking and the whipping and he got tied to a pole. I didn't get that. I got whipped a few times. But you see, my one, one time my father said, you know what, we don't have a priest in our family. He wasn't telling me that, he was just saying it out loud, just thinking. And somehow that got embedded in my head. And so the time when the time came, God used that to say, I'm calling you out. I'm making you one of my ministers. See, one, one of the parables that Jesus gave out to us was the prodigal son. See, the prodigal son was he the older brother or the younger brother? 
right. The prodigal son and his older brother and the blessing of God went to the prodigal son, the younger brother. See, the kingdom belongs to such as these. When you look at the children in here, the kingdom belongs to you. Kingdom belongs to you. Kingdom belongs to your children. So please, every time you look at them, just remember, you're messing with the kingdom. You are messing with the kingdom. And pray to God that your hand on your children are always a hand of grace and love and compassion. Amen? See, God's hand is on the youth. Let's always remember that. God's hand is on the youth. And when you go to the Kingdom Kids room out there, remember that. God's hand is on the youth.